I have so much I have to say. I have so much I want to say. Okay. So for anyone that needs to know just about context, basically, Peter Coffin just released another video today called The YouTuber Crisis. With the thumbnail that is very simplistically just says, I quit in the middle. I'm going to be commenting on that. This is more of a commentary than a reaction video. This isn't a critique on Peter Coffin per se, but it also kind of is. Anyway, that makes sense at the end. Many of you that will be used to my content being live, this is the first time I'm doing it. But on this topic, at least, just not live, because I want to be very clear about what I have to say. And so I figured that like having the time to like choose my words carefully would be good. I'm probably still going to talk about this on my live stream like this weekend or sometime. So check that out as well if you want. Maybe so I'll add some like context depending on what people say in the comments. It's Peter Coffin here conflating the difference between using AI and plagiarizing. Whereas as far as I remember, the topic of plagiarism that H. Palmer guys brought up didn't really talk about AI much at all. So why is Peter Coffin conflating the two here? Unless they have an ulterior motive. Why, why are all these people retiring from YouTube? One of the dream jobs that many people want to have. Okay, let's just jump into this. I didn't necessarily want to ever bring up the whole James Summerton, H-Bomber guy, particularly Peter Coffin situation, okay? I was done with it. It was interesting at the time. I think it's an important conversation to have. But honestly, the same person that originally sent me the Peter Coffin video also sent me this recent video of theirs that just released today at the point of filming. I watched it out of like morbid curiosity, you know, like when you're not really invested in something and you're like, well, it's probably got nothing to do with anything anyway. So there's no harm in watching this, right? Well, well, <sighs> in FD Signifier style, I've got an incense going for a change, which is kind of nice. Honestly, the rose incense and in this coffee is amazing. <sighs> Love. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Let's start, shall we? Let's make a start. My name's Peter Coffin, and the attention bubble has burst. Ah, the YouTubers are quitting, and so am I. I quit. Ha 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 I want to first of all talk about clickbaiting. Okay, so I'm watching this video, I'm giving it a chance. I don't know, I'm morbidly fascinated. I have covered this creator, so I'm like invested a bit. And I'm like, okay, surely Peter isn't going to clickbait us again, like they did for the H. Bomb Monkai video. Maybe that was just like a one time technique. I don't know, I don't follow this stuff. Like, surely they're not going to do that again. Oh, ow, oh, ow. Fully burnt myself. Oh, it's not going well, people. Surely they're not gonna just clickbait us again. And like, maybe this is actually an announcement. Maybe I'm naive and I was just like, I'm just too believing. No, 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 clickbait. We are 20 seconds in and Peter Coffin has already clickbaited us into believing that they are quitting YouTube. Right off the bat, the morality and the ethics behind YouTube are already in question because you've just clickbaited everyone that's watching. You have the title, the YouTuber crisis. Okay, I wonder what this is. I need to know more about it. This looks informative. I might learn something. And then I quit in the middle. So, oh, this is important like notification from Peter. The only justification I can possibly come up with here is that people that have followed Peter for a long time know that this is going to be clickbait. Not that that makes it okay. That's really probably why people don't click on your videos. The reason thumbnails and titles are so important is because those two methods are the most important ways that you communicate what you want to talk about. If those two things are instantly met with a distrust by the viewer, why would they click them of everything else there? And that does come into relevance with this video because the whole point is Peter basically being bitter that no one is watching their content and that YouTube as an entire ecosystem is changing. And wah, wah, wah. I know somebody is going to be like, yeah, only getting a few thousand views a video. It's like, well, compare that to the few hundred I was getting uh, a year or two ago. <laughs> My documentaries are all sitting at like 20 ish thousand views that's pretty good i'm happy with that um monetarily speaking that's a disaster but peter has over 200,000 subscribers there's a reason that there is only a handful of people still watching their content you haven't met the fundamental basis of trusting your viewer and, and respecting them enough to communicate correctly what you're actually going to talk about 
and they the, the thing that gets me this is the third video i've seen of theirs and they just clickbait and then talk about how that, that was clickbait and then expect people to carry on watching <laughs> um. a huge element of why how a video does well is the watch through so how long the average viewer watches through your video that's why i say if you if you can't help my channel monetarily you don't want to and become a member or patron or can't do right now completely understand that just please watch my videos to the end lots of people said that because it really helps the channel so what does peter coffin do instead peter coffin clickbaits admits it in 20 seconds and then wonders why people just click off the video first off a load of youtubers are either quitting or scaling back their operations significantly and kind of acting like it's quitting the biggest one as of right now is matt pat from game theory who is not going to make content anymore um however he is going to retain ownership over the uh the theory brand matt pat i think the smartest of the bunch keeping the uh, best of both worlds train rolling Keeping ownership of that as an as like a brand, as an IP or whatever, or as a channel, or all four channels, as they say, is completely expected. And I wouldn't say in any way is like immoral. Like if you wrote a really popular book series and stopped writing new books, you wouldn't just sell the brand suddenly or series. You wouldn't just kind of stop owning it. Marvel, that's not doing too good. For nearly a decade, they were able to spit out whatever schlop they came up with, and people would go see it in droves. Marvel and or other superhero movies regularly made a billion dollars. A billion dollars. None of that's happening anymore. Let's talk about podcasts a little bit right now. Talking about Marvel here, it really doesn't seem like it has a connection. You could argue that people not going to the cinema and not wanting to watch the latest Hollywood blockbuster film actually goes to Ward saying that more people are watching content create created by individual people. More people are watching YouTube, more people are watching like Netflix or the, the streaming services. Fewer people are going out to the cinema because they're not really invested in a film that is absolutely murdering the brand that has been going for generations now. You could easily use the same non-cited, non-data backed up point that Peter is making to absolutely prove the opposite point. Podcasts are in a pretty dire situation everyone has a podcast and that means uh companies like ymh studios tom segura's podcast uh studio there's a ton of controversy involving him and the other joe rogan orbiting comedians with a podcast they're getting a big old backlash for becoming pretty big and then not being quite as big which is kind of like a weird backlash but also they're not really taking it in stride these folks Again, everyone having a podcast doesn't necessarily mean that they're in a dire situation. The Do We Know Them podcast is flourishing for you girlies out there that know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> like there are so many success stories as well. And again, Peter is giving no evidence to any of these. I literally just gave one, but that's like a tiny amount. Like it depends again, relatively what you consider successful to be. But just randomly throwing in the argument of podcasts here makes no sense. But why am I saying the attention bubble has burst? Well, there's too much. You don't have enough time in a day to watch everything. So we've had the claim here that there's the attention bubble has burst for YouTube as a as a as a platform. I guess. I mean, I wonder if I can just find like I guess any data showing how many people are watching YouTube would probably be from YouTube. So it'd probably be un. Let me see if I can find something though. Okay, so I'm kind of doing this semi as I go. But from literally Googling how many views does YouTube get compared to other platforms, I found a website called Demand Sage. I don't know how trustworthy they are. I can't speak for them. I don't know. But uh, they say YouTube statistics for 2024, user facts and more by Rohit Shewale on January the 10th, 2024. So it's like a day old. YouTube is the biggest video sharing platform and the second biggest social media in the world with over 2.70 billion users as of 2024. There is some stuff I'd love to like compare them to other things. So da -da 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 -da. YouTube monthly active users is crazy high. 33% of the world's population use YouTube every month. And looking at a kind of year on year facts, it is increasing. Daily active users, 62% of YouTube users in the USA access the platform. That's the equivalent of 153.14 million people. So let's see if we can find like 
compared to other people other platforms i think that's what we would we would want here now youtube revenue over the years is going down we can see here it was the highest in 2021 according to this chart okay youtube's rank among social media as of 2024 youtube is the second biggest social media in the world with over 2.7 billion active users only facebook at 3.05 billion has more active users than youtube there are 4.95 billion active social media users worldwide this means that 54 percent of active social media users in the world access youtube and the reason i bring that up is because a theme i find through this entire video is that peter coffin just very much comes across as someone bitter that they are not getting more attention on their video or their channel in general i'm going to give my reasons as to why i think that is the case but i don't know the full story i don't know this creator from before i think but that's kind of an important thing as well people watching youtube aren't necessarily going to be the same people now that they were 20 years ago the platform is growing with its demographic for sure people forget that like your sub count as well is not a static number that just grows it's kind of people coming in and drop, dropping off the back that's how many people describe it so if you have a thousand subscribers that's not the same thousand people that you had when you started your channel that will be like 800 people maybe of the same group 200 people have dropped off and 200 people have jumped on from peter coffin's perspective it's very clear from looking at their views that they are not getting the same amount of people watching now that they did at some point with their subscriber count. I'm like the only person who's like doing better now than a couple of months ago, it seems like. Well, many of you that found my video on Peter Coffin before had like already known of them and I don't know who they are, but neither will a lot of people that are still finding their channel now and they're not sticking around. So that 200,000 subscriber count that they boast doesn't reflect in their views because a lot of people may subscribe and they may even forget that they've subscribed but there's nothing about peter's content that makes you want to stick around let's have a look now at social blade and um, maybe we can see into the history of peter coffin's channel and i can try and find for myself like what what happened really t okay t so i can already see <laughs> gosh so looking at peter coffin's channel on social blade check it out if you can I can see that they are dropping like a thousand subscribers like every every so often it, i would say it looks like they're not really gaining in subscriber count but they are getting the odd thing that brings them in views there was a video on the 3rd of january that got 650,000 views i'm kind of confused okay hold on 3rd of january this year they gained 650,000 views 3rd of january was a week ago so at first I was really confused and then I found out that they have a Green Day parody that makes sense. The video is about Green Day. I haven't seen it. I probably should just watch it and then I would understand what's going on, but I don't really want to. So let's talk about healthy subscriber metrics. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin? <laughs> I mean, Peter Coffin. So ignoring the fact that they lost 3 million views in the month of June 2022. 3.5 over 3.5 million views in february 2021 but what i really found interesting when i looked into this is how you can see that they're just periodically losing subscribers that's not a sign of the healthiest channel in the world like most youtubers drop a couple subscribers when they drop a video just because someone might have subscribed to one video not really like the rest of the content and just that th that's their reminder to unsubscribe but to periodically be just losing a thousand subscribers almost every month albeit fewer these days now it's like a thousand subscribers every few months like that's just not the sign of the healthiest channel in the world really whilst this looks like just an, a mean like takedown like point it it's relevant because peter coffin is mentioned is talking about other channels and their behavior and their views in a way that to me it's kind of clear that they're just jealous to talk about youtube having an attention problem and the attention bubble bursting when we all know that at least 13 million people sat down and watched four hours of H Bomber Guy talk, to me, that doesn't show that there's an attention bubble bursting. It shows that people aren't paying Coffin the attention that they want. They're taking it out by kind of moaning about everyone else, which is really, really childish, and then clickbaiting people into watching a video that doesn't actually talk about what they said they were going to talk about, and then wonders why people don't watch to the end. <laughs> No one wants to watch you talk about the fact that you're not actually quitting YouTube, even though you say you are. As a YouTube channel scales, it often transforms. MatPat, for instance, has scaled 
pretty significantly. And as you become the center of a business, people depend on you. It's actually kind of scary, the thought of doing my documentaries with the understanding that their success is important for other people to eat or pay rent. That's actually terrifying to me. <laughs> so the only thing I can agree with Peter so far is when they mentioned about having to almost guarantee your success in order for you to be able to pay fairly your employees or continuously pay any employees that you have. And that being an excuse as to why you don't employ anyone. And for me personally, at my tiny scale that's only starting to grow, I can understand that tremendously. And I even get a lot of support offered to me by my community, especially in my Discord server. And people say, I'd love to help you. But I, as especially as a leftist, I worry about that because I can't afford to pay them fairly. I'm not quite ready to give out shares of my brand and company and channel because I don't know quite where it's going. And also I cannot guarantee the success. One of my videos has got over 100,000 views and some of them get 100 views. I'm still far too small to be able to really fairly say, yes, I can pay you this much or I can do this for you. And I also wouldn't want to exploit anyone's hours or, or anything because that would be completely hypocritical for me as a leftist. Tom Scott, for instance, talks about how he doesn't want to scale. He doesn't want to expand his operations and become a manager of various laborers. He doesn't like that idea. He likes the idea of making videos, and that puts him in the same category as me, except for a lot more successful because he uploads weekly and gets like a million minimum per upload. And that's again because the market is saturated. The attention bubble has burst. I don't believe that the attention bubble has burst. I believe that the attention is shifting to other people. There are other creators that are doing fantastically. I've watched the growth of some creators over the past year in this industry, and it's been heartwarming to see Turb. Turb's journey of going up in views is amazing. CJ the X, Khadija M. Bao, Film Cooper, Noah Samson, like these are uh, so many. Of course, there are so many, <laughs> there are so many. But I think like I've said in so many different circles, is that people are now finding that they have the ability to choose who and what kind of content they watch. And there are many people that have been in this game for a long time that are finding themselves not being chosen anymore. They're not seeing that as a comment on their own quality and their own content. They're seeing that as a shift or the burst of the attention bubble. No, maybe people just don't want to watch your content. And when you scale, you create something that is inherently different than if you were just doing something because it is a passion project of yours. If I wanted to do my content as a business, I would need to figure out a way to scale. I could not make those documentaries at the speed that I currently make them. I would have to make them much faster. Whether they're scaling back or scaling up, a lot of the time the content that they move into uh, tends to be more easy to produce content. Stuff that doesn't require an investment up front that's your commentary stuff, your reactions, your drama, your your whatever, whatever you want to call that. The slight tone that Coffin is expressing here, that creation of commentary and reaction content is less of work, for sure. There is a valid argument there. And there is no doubt that creators like Sniper Wolf and stuff have come under fire for simply reacting very sim easily to certain content. And the time and effort and scripting and skills are going to be different to creating a full-blown documentary or even video essay. I know that as someone that does them both. And definitely one gets more views than the other. However, I think that there is a another tone of jealousy in what Peter Coffin is saying about how one is treated and how one performs. It's no secret that commentary and reaction videos do well. There are very successful people that do it. Hassan Paika every day on Twitch does amazingly stats wise and also his content is wonderful and I go live every week and there is a thrill I get from going live that I am not getting right now when I make this for you I'm speaking out into an empty room it's cold my incense is done my coffee is finished and I don't get the same thrill of seeing people react to my reactions chatting in the chat me being able to bounce off them learning new things being taught every day when I go live it's a different beast entirely and I also think, whilst I don't have the facts or data to back this up, this is just an opinion of my own and my own lived experience, that the pandemic that we've all just experienced being locked down and seeing the world around us completely shift has left many people absolutely gasping for some connections, even if they are from a parasocial background. 
I love the podcast Do We Know That I mentioned it earlier. But the reason I love that is because it feels like I have two people that I trust talking in the background while I get along with my day, doing my ironing, planning a video essay or whatever. They're chatting away, I'm finding it interesting and I can trust that they're going to talk about things I know and understand. And quite frankly, their trans representation and the way they cover left leaning topics for a channel that doesn't openly discuss leftist topics to me is, is heartwarming. And I choose to listen to that twice a week because I enjoy it. They work very hard. Jess and Lily are doing so well at creating content that's just commentary and being reacted to. They're even being sued because <laughs> allegedly there's so much wrong with the process of that whole thing. We are seeing a disproportionate level of attention being given to the difficulty in the content being created. I can understand that. But that's not innately a bad thing. You could also argue that the video essays that are created and crafted do better in some other ways. H Bomber Guy's four hour video is a clear example of that. It's not just H Bomber Guy reacting to something happening on the screen for four hours. It's something else entirely. It was crafted, it was scripted, and it was done really well. And that boasts 13 million views. Peter Coffin, until your documentaries do that level, you can't really come in with this understanding that commentary and reaction videos are easy to make and that's why they're inferior forms of content creation when you're not even necessarily successful at what you're currently doing. Is that too harsh? I might need to cut that out because also I don't think it made sense, but I do need the loo, so hold on. So I managed to get 11 minutes and 14 seconds into the video before it became apparent to me that this entire video was just yet again another comment on Hate Bomber Guy and the whole situation with calling out James Summerton upon other creators' plagiarism. I think there's actually two primary reactions to this phenomenon, the oversaturation of the content market, specifically YouTube. The first one we've covered is quitting, and the second one is calling out plagiarism. Peter Coffin doesn't seem to understand the morality behind the issues directly correlated to plagiarism compared to easy content generation, copyright, copying, everything else. Plagiarism is, is a different beast. It's reading someone's entire article from front to back, changing the odd word and making money off that more than the original creator without commenting on who they are, with hiding it from them and gaslighting them about what's happening. It's taking money for a Kickstarter and starting a production company and not holding yourself accountable for where that money is being spent. I mean, that's not plagiarism, that's James Summerton, obviously. The entire community of YouTube is talking about plagiarism. I think it's a good thing. We should call out plagiarism. And quite frankly, anyone that is justifying plagiarism and defending it or even coming with any contrarian points in, in general, to me are coming up to be a little bit sus. Now, <laughs> I don't think that there is, er is any correlation to the market being oversaturated. I worked really hard to get to the top and now it's changing. I earned this. I'm the real creator, man. You aren't, you AI using hack. Also, let's make it very clear that it's Peter Coffin here that is conflating the difference between using AI and plagiarizing. Whereas as far as I remember, unless I'm mistaken, the topic of plagiarism, plagiarism? The topic of plagiarism that H. Bomber guys brought up didn't really talk about AI much at all, unless I'm mistaken. And if it did, it wasn't really the main core of the video. I don't know any topic uh, that I remember that has been James Summerton being called out for AI use. So why is Peter Coffin conflating the two here? Unless they have an ulterior motive. And before going into any more detail with regards to the calling out of AI and plagiarism as a topic, Peter just moves straight to the conversation of creators saying not to call out someone and yet the audience that watches that particular content calling out another creator. There's not really any kind of justification as to the original point being made. You little plagiarizing. Why do you think that you're a real creator? I'm the real creator. I'm going to tell my audience not to harass you. Also, I'm going to tell them not to think about pink elephants. And then pink elephants definitely won't be in their brain. Telling them not to think about pink elephants will definitely make them not think about pink elephants. Oh, would you look at that? They're harassing people into oblivion and calling it justice. Hmm. Yeah, that's the mad reaction. <laughs> and now Peter Coffin also talks about how they need to degrow YouTube, otherwise they can't maintain or ever. Not giving any names as to who on earth Peter Coffin is talking about. 
And they're also talking about how the fact they're making another documentary about Plato, AI, and H. Bomber Guy. These are the people that don't want to scale, but also still want to maintain their status as successful YouTube creators. I am producing a documentary right now called Plato is a Bitch, AI, and Bomber Guy. And it addresses, in my opinion, what is driving the sort of mindset that the mad reaction has. They know that they have to degrow YouTube somehow. Otherwise, their their time is limited as a YouTuber. Are we seriously meant to just sit here and take the fact that Peter Coffin is commenting on the irony that everyone is still talking about the same conversation and regurgitating the same stuff and calling people out when this is the fourth time that it's in their mouth? So for Peter Coffin to be calling out people on their morality and their methodology of how they create content, what they create, if they're doing it in a way that makes Peter Coffin proud or happy, and then completely ironically talking about the same thing because they know they get better views about it. And just a recent look at Peter Coffin's view stats on YouTube shows that the original video they did a month now from the time of filming titled Plagiarism is Awesome and Here's Why has 13,000 views. And the subsequent video to that, It's the System Stupid More H-Bomb Plagiarism Crap, has 9.8 thousand views. This isn't substantially higher than everything else, but it's pretty high. What I'm more talking about now is the fact that they're, what, a month later, still talking about the same topic in a way that doesn't quite actually justifiably talk about the issue at hand, about James Summerton. At no point does this creator talk about how what James Summerton did was bad, technically. Which again, you just have to kind of ask yourself, well, why? Why are you justifying the idea of plagiarism? Which, by the way, is completely different to AI-generated content, isn't it? To some extent. Maybe. Well, at least what James Summerton did is, anyway. To me, this is extremely hypocritical. To comment on anyone's content generation, whether that be from AI, whether that be man-made, whether that be about a topic of plagiarism or AI or anything, I just find to be very hypocritical. Stay in your lane. Do your own thing. If you're succeeding, great for you. I hope you're getting as many views as you want. But stop commenting on how other people do something in a way that then is also very much something that people could comment on, I'm just saying. But I will say, I am the exception rather than the rule. I mentioned this earlier, but for whatever reason, my channel is doing better than it has in a very long time. I will actually get an AdSense payout this month. Again, I'm not here to belittle anyone's achievements and their own feeling of success. If Peter's happy with 20,000 views for a documentary, then good for them. That's really great. I'm not here to take that away. What I am making the link to is how Peter Coffin seems to be talking a lot about H-Bomber Guy and what's going on with James Summerton and everything else, who has 13 million views. And we can't deny how there is a relevance there of a creator that has clearly is just hemorrhaging subscribers, hasn't got the same eyes on their videos as they want, and is commenting on someone else and critiquing someone else's strategies, topics of choice, methodology, when it's very clear that like they're not exactly doing something right themselves. And I think that if Peter had arguably relative success in their categories, let's say, and their documentaries were doing at a level of H-Bomb and Guy, then maybe their critiques would have weight. But to me, especially as a very small creator, to the scale of either of these people it's very much apparent that like peter is not one to come with such um an opinion i'm gonna say it like everyone's entitled to their opinion and everyone's entitled to voice their opinion but viewers at home are also entitled to not watch that person's opinion and it's very clear what one's happening here it all comes down to this one point this one line that peter coffin says that alludes to the fact that they are in the opinion that H-Bomber Guy called out James Summerton's plagiarism to knock someone else off of BreadTube. But what I'm basically saying here is you can look at what's going on with these quitting YouTubers, these scaling back YouTubers, and the calling out of plagiarism as a response to the same thing. YouTube is now beyond capacity. The bubble has popped, and thus things need to degrow. And then calling out plagiarism, which is doing what is possible to knock people like James Summerton out of the ecosystem so that the time in a day that the bread tube liking viewer has increases. And therein, free up some viewing hours that other people can 
give to H Bomber Guy or Bread Tube in its entirety. Now I'm gonna say this very clearly. That is absolutely bullshit. It's almost frightening to imagine that Peter Coffin truly believes this, albeit I don't think they really do, deep down. Peter Coffin cannot truly think that H Bomber Guy has spent however long, months, creating a video just to knock off one small creator from the platform. It's not like James Summerton had anywhere near the amount of views to justify doing so purely for the fact of freeing up some view time. I truly believe, and H Bomber Guy, if for some reason you see this and you want to add to it, please give me a shout out, let's just chat. I truly believe that H Bomber Guy did what he did because two reasons. One, he was sick of hearing James Summerton talk rubbish in videos and had to do something about it. And B, knew it was the right thing to do because plagiarism is innately not okay. It's a moral thing. I don't think it came down to the facts of AI and viewer stats and trying to knock someone else off a podium. James Summerton was no one to H Bomber Guy. I'd like to believe that H Bomber Guy did what he thought was right in the moment and for the sake of the ecosystem that is BreadTube. And if Peter Coffin can't understand the morality behind that, that tells me so much about Peter Coffin. All I know is someone defending the idea of plagiarism to the point of saying that the only reason H Bomber Guy called out James Summerton was to clear up some viewing time, to me, is just so wild. It's so wild. It's so wild. Or while you're taking part in a harassment mob to get somebody off of the internet who has plagiarized or used AI. At the end of the day, Peter ends on the discussion of not joining a hate mob or they talk about how bad it is if you join a hate mob that is jumping on the bandwagon of calling out plagiarism and the use of AI. Now again, forgive me if I missed this whole entire topic, but I've A, been following it quite closely and B, think I know what I'm talking about here. H Bomber Guy and that whole situation didn't really talk about AI, did it? Again, I'm questioning myself here, but I think I would have seen it if it did come up. And I find it very, very interesting that Peter is adding in the conversation of AI use and conflating it with plagiarism. I think that that's ridiculous. They're completely different things. They're different levels of morality and they're different topics in any form. At the end of the day, I'm under the opinion that Peter Coffin, you are a hypocrite. You're calling out people for what they do and don't do on YouTube as creators, what they do and don't cover, how they do and don't cover it, when you're also very much making content that you know is gonna get clicks and you're clickbaiting people, you're talking about topics without really talking about them fairly in my opinion. And if you're gonna call out people for their morality on YouTube, then you have to put your hands up and expect people to do the same for you. But when you do, you don't seem to like it. And I would also say that there is a huge difference between people not watching content that they're no longer enjoying and cancelling someone. Cancelling is just a right wing dog whistle for whining about the fact that you're not getting the same attention that you used to after you've done something problematic. Peter Coffin, if you're not getting the same views as, as H Bomber Guy, maybe you should look at your own content, your own opinions and your own self as a creator and stop blaming someone else and say that they must be doing it because they're worried about how many people are watching James Summerton and they're trying to get someone off the platform. Maybe you're just not entertaining. I'm sorry to break it to you. I'm here for a conversation if you want to actually discuss this. I'm not trying to sound too critical or too negative. Again, I've only just discovered who you are and so far from what I've seen, I'm very much less than impressed. Anyway, this is something so different to what I've released before. I don't know how it's going to perform. I'm not really worried about that. I really just wanted to make this video and I haven't had that kind of passion behind wanting to make something in a long time since the H Bomber Guy video in itself. So we'll see how it goes. If you've watched to the end, I really appreciate you because it does help me out tremendously. Honestly, people know what to do by now. I'm not going to plug it. I'm really not here for that today. But thank you so much for everyone that has stuck around since finding my videos and finding my channel. It's had an amazing amount of success recently. Quite frankly, I'm scared to ask for anything else for this year. I'm just happy as it goes. Now, as I always like to say, I'm always open to critique and please do let me know in the comments if you think I missed something, if you think I wasn't fair, if you think I was hypocritical and I missed something else out and that needs to be talked about. Like I really am here for it. Now I have had a huge surge in comments recently and I've not been able to reply to them like I used to and I apologize for that. But I will try and at least talk about the ones that are important and if you do get any form of harassment or anything I am like mostly here on my own so just let me know and I will try and handle it as much as I can. 
Anyway, disclaimer is over. Have an amazing day. I will see many of you in my live stream. I love you, Watts. Take. I love you, Watts. I love you lots. Take care of yourselves and have a wonderful week. Bye. I guess that's a wrap. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know what is life. But I'm saying that unless you're entertaining as well or there is some value in watching your video, then that's the final nail in the coffin. Oh, did I really? I made that joke. I didn't actually. Uh, this isn't scripted. I'm making up as I go along. But fact checking as I go along is a different even is today okay <laughs> this is completely irrelevant to this whole topic um i might put this in at the end i don't know i just had a knock on my door i live in japan for anyone that doesn't know and it was just this lovely old lady that just was asking about my futon like my bed my mattress i was just like how long have you been using it are you planning to buy a new one and i just had to be like mm, not right now thank you <laughs> she was like Oh, you're so your Japanese is amazing. I was like, okay, thank you. And then I just was like, oh, my camera's on. So I'm a YouTuber. I don't know why I said that, but I just wanted to like be left alone. It's like 4 p.m. on a uh, on a Wednesday. <sighs> anyway, I have like adrenaline. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Am I gonna put that in? Probably. Will. I'm generally confused. I'm generally confused. I'm really confused. Okay, hold on. I don't know what I've just discovered. So, <laughs> this is weird. This is tea. Okay. So, Peter Coffin, on Social Blade, it says that on the 3rd of January, they had 650,000 views, which is uh, not crazy for their stats, but like quite substantial. So, I didn't really intend this, but as I was just looking into this situation, I find that uh, Peter Coffin can boast 650,000 views on the 3rd of January. Congratulations, Peter. That's not bad even for your stats. And considering that you just admitted in the video I'm watching of you that your videos get usually a thousand views or so, and this was a week before this video came out, I imagine that you would have said something about that. So I have a little look on Social Blade. Now, Social Blade might be incorrect. There could be an error here that I don't know. There could be something else that I'm not aware of. But, um, Looking at your channel, the video that you released any time around this only had 20,000 views. There are no shorts that happened that I can see around the same time that got anywhere near that kind of stat. Um, your shorts are around 1,000 to 5,000 views. There are no recent shorts that got anywhere near that. We've not done any lives that got anywhere near that many views. So I'm kind of confused as to why the video that you released around this time period is sitting on 20,000 views and your Social Blade account is both saying that you're boasting 650,000 views. At the same time, it's not 100% the case, but you would imagine that if you were to gain over 600,000 views that you would have gained some form of subscribers in that time as well. But your subscriber count has continuously dropped. So I'm very confused as to what's going on here. Oh, back in June, you lost 3 million views. You lost 3 million views. Oh, unless you un unlisted a video that had that many views way back when. Or you had some copyright strikes that kind of were bringing you down. Maybe this one. 100,000 views from Jordan Peterson. Hey, that's odd, I guess. Oh. Hold on, I think I worked it out. 14 years ago, you did a video that has 631,000 views called Know Your Anima, Green Day Parody. 